Good afternoon, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the trading session of Thursday. The, uh, just to clarify, Thursday, the 19th of October 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, Signal's market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the, uh, the, uh, the actual app itself from uh, the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so a volatile morning this morning. Uh, we have the um, uh, Chinese market selling off on mass. Japanese market certainly collapsing as well, and the uh, Hang Seng certainly down quite substantially. It certainly did um, trigger off a risk aversion in uh, European markets as well. Uh, you first of all give you Asian stats. You have the um, uh, Hang Seng down 100, a whopping 550 points, down almost two percentage points, and that uh, that alone is scary. Uh, the Shanghai down 0.3 percent, and Nikkei. Uh, certainly down after hours quite substantially as well, falling down to 21,230 from um, the likes of uh, 21, 21,500. So uh, an impressive sell-off uh, to say the least. Now let's just quickly bring up the USDJPY, it'll be depicted in there. Okay, so if we bring up the 60-minute chart, the USDJPY, you can see we hit a pivot high at 1.1, well, 113.15, and now we're down almost 70, 80 pips. We are going to support though. And therefore, U.S. equity should certainly come into support as well. Mm -hmm. U.S. equity is certainly under immense pressure as well. Okay, so that's the status quo at present uh, in terms of the markets there. Let's uh, quickly uh, look at the stats for Europe now, and then we'll go into the uh, fundamentals. European markets, FTSE down almost 45 uh, points. German DAX down 116 points. German DAX chart looks crazy. I'll certainly give you an insight into the volatility there. Certainly waking up at last, thank God. We've got some volatility in the markets. Okay, for French CAC down as well. IBEX, uh, FTSE MIB. Okay, so two factors as to a uh, reason why the markets are under pressure. Number one, Chinese uh, GDP numbers didn't actually come out as uh, as stronger than as everybody expected. And obviously going forward as well, they're going to uh, mute growth and manage growth at a, 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 a consistent level. Number one. Number two, uh, Catalonia certainly uh, declaring independence given the fact that Spain is uh, triggering article. I think it's number 155, if I can recollect correctly. Please don't hold me to that. Okay, so basically uh, exerting their um, governance upon them, uh, dictating to them, that certainly isn't going to be uh, welcomed by Catalonia, which again complicates things even more. Also with regards to Apple Watch uh, as well, Apple Watch hit cellular, cellular slag in China. So again, uh, hits a snag there and also uh, demand for iPhone 8 certainly isn't as, as strong as everybody expected, which to be honest with you, I think we already knew. Uh, I think it was pretty self-evident that the... Uh, iPhone 8 is pretty crap. The watch is even more uh, rubbish as well. Ever since Mr. Cook obviously has departed, it, it's um, uh, what should we say? It's not uh, Tim Cook. Basically, ever since uh, Mr. Jobs has departed, Mr. Cook really is incompetent from my perspective. Just like Theresa May, uh, really redundant, out of ideas. Just basically recycling, recycling the same thing over and over again. Uh, changing the color, changing the size, and that's not exactly innovation. That's really is uh, is rejuvenation of the same product. So. It really is sad uh, to see that. But either way, uh, market certainly is uh, pricing uh, uh, equity markets higher and higher. It certainly is a Bitcoin rally with regard to tech rather than a, an Apple rally. Okay, so that's the status quo there. So Apple iPhone sales, sell, uh, the uh, Apple Watch hit, uh, hitting a cellular slag as well. Also, we had Unilever and um, uh, Publicis certainly coming in with weaker earnings as well. Uh, obviously, Catalonia concerns as well. So all that certainly adding together and obviously given the fact that USD, JPY started to to get smoked, okay, uh, which in turn obviously caused the uh, Japanese Nikkei certainly to get hammered uh, again along with the Chinese markets as well. Let me just quickly bring up the uh, chart of the uh, Shanghai daily. You can see certainly weaker as well on the Nikkei on the daily chart. Let's just quickly bring up the daily chart. It actually did finish uh, obviously on a doji, but after hours it, it got absolutely annihilated, okay. That's the status quo. SP 500 now, they're back down to 2550, the, uh, the Nasdaq down to 6073. Certainly both under pressure, okay? Okay, so uh, that's the status quo. In terms of economic data, let's quickly go through that as well. Chinese data, like I said, didn't come out as strong as expected uh, 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 overnight. Also, we had uh, Japanese exports certainly coming in weaker than expected as well. Uh, imports certainly coming in weaker than expected. So again, that certainly weighed on sentiment there. Chinese industrial production basically coming in slightly stronger than expected and uh, retail sales slightly stronger, but urban investment came in slightly weaker and GDP numbers certainly missed as well. Okay, in terms of um, European data, then retail sales out of the UK came in weaker than expected. Again, raising concerns there. Uh, also, obviously, we, we've got talk with regards to the ECB and them cutting their Q, cutting back on QE. Uh, again, that's caused the euro to surge up to 1.1830 and obviously could trigger risk aversion. 
Okay, so let's look at the actual charts now. And again, like I said, it'll be scary watching the German DAX. Look at that move from 13,100 down to 12,920. So almost a 200 pip sell off. Uh, we've got a bottoming tail there now, certainly bottoming out here in terms of the German DAX on a 60 minute chart. A uh, daily chart at the moment certainly has broken back below the key breakout. That certainly isn't a positive sign, so bear that in mind. We do have another gap fill at 12.830. Let's see if we can close that gap. 60-minute chart, the German DAX now. One would now uh, con presume and uh, now look towards a potential H&S formation brewing now. Any potential rally on the German DAX, unless we take out that pivot high at 13.100. Well, to be precise, 13.095. Okay, my bias would remain bearish on the German DAX with the HNS formation top, especially with Catalonia now certainly becoming a reality. The concerns there becoming a reality. Uh, again, that will cause a risk aversion. So just bear that in mind, okay? Looking for risk aversion in terms of the uh, Catalonian situation and generally in the markets uh, overall, okay? So again, you have uh, concerns with regard to Japan, China, concerns with regards to Japan and their export picture there. And obviously concerns with regards to ECB and QE going forward, etc., etc. Now, if you add all those together, certainly doesn't bode well. Okay. In terms of French CAC, let's just bring up the French CAC for you as well. Daily chart at the moment, certainly coming in weak. We still failed to close that gap at 5405, so just bear that in mind. Okay. Uh, given the fact that uh, even with all this bullish uh, price action, we still failed to do that. That generally is a negative sign. Okay. So we've got gap fill above now. Gap fill. Uh, uh, we have unfilled gap at 5380. That remains your resistance zone. We've got a pivot high now at 5395. Uh, Until we take that out, my bias will be bearish. Uh, and again, I'll be looking for the uh, the actual bearish setup here. This is a beautiful setup now in terms for me. I, I, my bias will certainly be uh, bearish now going forward in terms of the French CAC. Now, I'm looking for a potential h &S formation. Same with the German DAX, okay? So it looks like the Euro USD certainly has bottomed out. And again, look for a h &S formation to play out. So looking for the right shoulder now to be confirmed. Uh, again, gap fill is at 5380. Pivot top is 5390. If you want you to calculate your HNS formation here as well, folks. So those of you that are looking or on the bearish side, again, this is an awesome pattern. Okay, 5395 minus your base now, which is today's pivot low uh, and yesterday's pivot low. So 5345. So you're looking for a 50 point drop here. So you're looking at uh, 5295. Okay, that's your target on the downside. Those of you that are trading the HNS formation. There is an unfilled gap at 5270, which again, obviously, will, 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 will certainly potentially even come into play. And then you have previous resistance equals support at 5295, which is very convenient. Okay, so again, watch out for that potential 5295 HS target below. In terms of FTSE 100, let's look at this. Now, again, this is a trade that I've just taken. I took out a short trade at 7526, uh, covered at 75, covered for plus 23 on the downside. That was nice. That was a nice trade. Certainly like that trade. Okay. Uh, again, FTSE certainly finding support around this 7490 zone, 7500, the bulls certainly are defending it. So just keep bear that in mind. Having said that, though, I'll certainly be looking to short the FTSE on every pop, okay, looking for this bear flag formation play out. We failed to make higher highs now. We've made, we're making lower lows and lower highs. Seven minute chart. Okay, and you can see there double bottom certainly holding, okay. Uh, daily chart, again, we can, we can clearly see resistance in this zone here around the 7550. So until we take out 7550, 7560, bias remains bearish for my interpretation and my uh, my outlook, okay. Last but not least, let's quickly go over the Euro stocks. Euro stocks certainly is a, a, another weak candidate. Daily chart, you can see we've certainly rejected. We failed to close that gap at 53640, okay. Concerns, bearish engulfing candle today. Concerns with regards to end of QE. Concerns over Catalonia as well, all those certainly adding to the uh, bearish sentiment. Again, looking for HNS formation top here, folks. Okay, so again, my buy certainly will be bearish. Okay, looking for a bear flag, looking for this HNS formation to play out. Looking for the right shoulder now. Okay, we've got the uh, neckline here, which is around the uh, 3590 head, which is 3625. Looking for a 35 point drop from there. Okay, so that certainly is pretty straightforward. So bias remains bearish on European equities from my interpretation. Obviously, weaker Chinese data, weaker, uh, although there were elements of the Chinese data being strong, a weaker China, Japanese data, USD, JPY is certainly getting uh, plummeting. Okay, yen certainly uh, being embraced, euro moving higher, uh, sterling under pressure to a large extent given the Brexit and uh, chaos that's obviously ensuing there. Okay, so I'm not going to delve into that because then this will make this, will make this video even longer and I try my best to make these videos as short as possible. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus and make sure you download the uh, latest app at Trade Signal and uh, certainly follow me on there. Goodbye now.